We already showed you what to do if you're stuck below 1500, but now we need to figure out what to improve if you're stuck here. There's some obvious choices like CC, cooldown trading, or positioning, but there's something simpler that always gets overlooked. It's knowing how and when to swap targets. Let's think about the average solo shuffle experience here. Someone in the starting room types in the chat to attack a target, and they keep attacking that same player until the end of the game, regardless of whether they win or lose. It seems good on paper, we get it, but there's one huge problem with this. Your initial target may not be the person to attack the entire game. At any point, they might become unattackable due to positioning or have a major defensive active or potentially someone else could become way more vulnerable. The initial target selection is meant to give your team direction, but if you really want to climb rating, you'll need to know when to swap. Now, if you want in-depth information to help you pick your initial target, know that we do have an updated guide available so you can check it out after this. So how do you know when to swap? The first thing you should look for are enemy cooldowns. To illustrate this, let's watch an arena opening together. Before the gates open, our team chooses the enemy Ret Paladin as the initial target. But look at what happens in the opener. The enemy Resto Druid uses Iron Bark and has full hots on the enemy DK. Meanwhile, the Paladin has a few seconds left on Divine Protection and has just popped Shield of Vengeance, while the Death Knight also has AMS and will soon use IBF. So, what's the target now? Well, believe it or not, the correct answer is the Healer. Since it's the start of the match, our Paladin still has Divine Steed and Freedom Ready, which allows them to swap to the Druid immediately without any hots. Now let's look at the cooldown balance at the end of this 3-second swap. Aside from the defensives that were forced prior, this swap forced Barkskin, Tranquility, Blessing of Sanctuary, and Sacrifice from the enemy Paladin. Not only that, but it also put the enemy Restoration Druid behind in HOTS and has opened up multiple kill targets. And if all this wasn't enough, the tempo swing was so hard that they even forced Divine Shield a second after. Let's take a look at another example, this time from the perspective of a caster. We're following a Destro Warlock playing with a Frost Mage, and their primary target is the Enhancement. As soon as the Shaman uses Astral Shift, which is their biggest defensive, the Warlock and Mage quickly switch their targets to the Warrior, who is in battle stance and essentially tanking full damage. But right after the Shaman's wall wears off, the Warlock and Mage switch back to their initial target. With this aggressive target swapping, they are able to bait the Arms Warrior into using Die by the Sword, while also connecting an unpredictable burst of damage on the Shaman, which ultimately ends up forcing Life Swap. We just can't stress enough how important swapping on defensives really is. Unless you're totally sure that you can kill the enemy through their cooldowns, hitting someone that'll take full damage is almost always better since it opens up more win conditions. Now, there is an additional layer behind all this, and it's understanding how to find kill windows in the roulette lobbies of Solo Shuffle. PvP is all about synergy and knowing how to play with your partners. And that's why we've developed a brand new course at SkillCap.com, which is designed to teach you how to play with every class. Every video in this course includes detailed breakdowns showing you exactly how to adjust your gameplay depending on your partners in Solo Shuffle. While you're waiting for your next cue, you could be learning expert advice from some of the world's best players. We make it our commitment to make sure you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. That's because our guides are proven to work, and if they don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. Arena doesn't always go your way, and sometimes it can feel like nothing you do matters. If you're experiencing these moments, a simple target swap might help. Let's see how. First off, as a caster, there's nothing more annoying than having a melee DPS chasing you down all game. It can feel like there's nothing you can do to make them go away, when in reality, it might actually mean it's time to swap to them. To make this most effective, you want to pull them into a vulnerable position by taking the melee to the outskirts of the map, ideally out of range or line of sight of their healer while still being in line of sight of your own. Let's take a look at this arena as an example. We're following a Warlock whose team is putting heavy pressure on the enemy mage. However, at the same time, the Warlock is forced to port away. While most people would immediately jump back in to keep pressure on the mage, they are all the way across the map. Meanwhile, the Ret is sprinting toward us with wings popped. 
Luckily, our Warlock has both defensives and CC ready, and using both of these, he baits the red into the starting room, completely out of line of sight of their healer, while dealing enough damage alone to force the red paladin back. Now, was the fact that he was a demo warlock part of this? Sure, but any caster in this situation has more power than they think. As long as you have defensives to fall back on, sometimes the safest thing you can do is bait melee away from their healer, which forces them to make a decision. Either they keep chasing you and risk overextending, or they realize what's happening and swap to someone else on your team, leaving you free to finally cast. It's worth noting that this strategy is particularly efficient in solo shuffle due to its lack of communication. In the case of our demo warlock, it's easy to see the ret dying alone if the enemy preservation evoker didn't have mobility up or game awareness to realize what was happening. And since his demon hunter was away hitting the mage, it makes things extra confusing for the enemy healer because now they're forced to deal with two targets on opposite sides of the map. Now let's think of a common melee problem. You already know how difficult it is to play against double caster on an open map. It seems like no matter what you do, you're left stranded with nothing to attack. In these situations, it's best to rely on the tried and tested hit the nearest wizard strategy. I mean, can you blame us? We only keep bringing it up again and again because it's proven to work against double caster. This involves playing goalkeeper for your healer by always hitting the enemy wizard who's closest to your pillar. By ping-ponging between casters, you prevent anyone from freely CCing your healer while also making sure you always have an easy escape plan in case you need to pull back. Sticking to this strategy is the safest thing you can do as a melee and is your only chance at dealing maximum damage safely. Instead of trying to brute force a win by chasing a caster across the map, your goal is to win the war of attrition by slowly starving the enemy team's health and cooldowns. Scoring a kill using this strategy can be tricky. While it can take you into deeper dampening, eventually you'll need to find a kill window and go all out. This DK has been applying this strategy for three minutes straight, reaching 50% dampening, and slowly chipped away at the two ice blocks from the mage, the unending resolve from the warlock, and the trinket and emerald communion from the evoker. What this means is now he has a perfect window to apply pressure. And in these moments, it's sometimes necessary to push in while using a defensive cooldown to make the final kill attempt much safer. By now, it should be clear that you need to be willing to swap targets more often in solo shuffle, and in some cases, this even includes the enemy healer. This opportunity arises more often than you think. Preservation evokers usually heal on top of their teammates. Most holy paladins and mistweaver monks heal by doing damage at melee range, and priests eventually push into fear. That means the majority of healers you will encounter in solo shuffle will push in at some point during the game. Here we have an example of how squishy an evoker can be when you know how to exploit their healing style and limited range. Our warrior is quick to realize that the enemy healer is on top of them, and even though the mage is on hypothermia, it will be difficult to connect to them from the center of the map. Instead, our team simply swaps to the Evoker, and once Nullifying Shroud ends, a Stormbolt is enough to end the game. By attacking healers, it gives you multiple pressure points. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean training healers all game. You still have to be smart with your initial target selection. Instead, if you see a healer play reckless and just push in without CDs, then you should use that opportunity to punish them with damage. Melee are able to do this quite efficiently, especially with CC ready. Here, our Paladin quickly tabs to the healer, pressures them momentarily, and then blinds them before switching back to the DPS. This now forces the healer to make a difficult choice on who to prioritize after this interaction. Do they heal themselves first, or do they push into their team? By pressuring healers, you gain a unique mental advantage. Swapping to healers is extra important in melee cleave matchups. By pushing into the enemy healer, you now give your team more cleave potential while also being able to apply additional pressure with your interrupts. While this is all happening, you're indirectly playing goalie for your healer since you're bringing the enemy DPS away from your pillar and on top of their healer. But before we wrap things up, let's discuss the most overlooked swap condition, positioning. One critical factor to keep in mind is your mobility. Let's take this match as an example. 
We're currently looking at the Warlock's point of view, but let's actually play a game and consider it from the perspective of the enemy warrior. They can likely see that the Warlock doesn't have access to their Unending Resolve, Healthstone, or Dark Pact. Furthermore, their Avatar Burst is locked and loaded, which means the Warlock is going to be their target, right? Well, not so fast. What he fails to realize is the Warlock's mobility. With both Teleport and Gateway ready, the Warrior doesn't have the mobility to keep up and stay on target, which is enough to waste offensive CDs and drop the kill window. Always consider your ability to chase and connect with your target before making a big swap and committing your cooldowns. Mobility is a key part of PvP that's sometimes overlooked in the midst of chaos, but it's crucial for making the best decisions. This is why, as an intermediate or advanced player, we highly recommend tracking CDs with Omnibar to make it easier to see who you can stick to. Lastly, keep in mind that hitting a target with every cooldown still generates more pressure than mindlessly chasing a defenseless target that you're unable to connect with. There's no point in waddling across the map to hit someone kiting 100 yards away from you when instead you could keep damage rolling on someone else. Let's see this concept in practice. Notice how the mage we're following almost kills the enemy arms warrior. However, instead of pushing in, the mage makes the right call of immediately swapping to the fury warrior, dragging them to a location further away from the enemy healer. This creates another pressure point and forces the healer to leave the comfort of their pillar and move into the open field of the map to heal their teammate. The healer is now in an extremely vulnerable position to CC, which even results in them getting fully poly. Now we've gone from check to checkmate, all because we recognized a swap condition based on positioning. But say you're still not convinced. Let's go back to where this interaction happened. We'll pause and pretend the mage instead used their last charge of shimmer to push in and chase the arms warrior. Most likely, the arms warrior would simply continue hugging the pillar, turning the corner, and line of siding until their healer tops their health. At this point, the mage would be in a much worse position, close to both warriors, without mobility, and with the enemy healer having a pillar to work with, which is just not a situation you want to be in. All right, guys, before we wrap this up, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about Skillcapped. We're the only website that promises that you'll gain at least 400 rating while using our guides. Instead of needing to waste all that time painfully figuring out PvP on your own, Skillcapped has streamlined the entire process and is guaranteed to deliver results. And our brand new course is designed to improve your rating by teaching you how to synergize with other classes. We also have hundreds of solo shuffle commentaries where expert players teach you the secret strategies in order to beat the toughest lobbies. So if you want to see real rating gains and achieve your goals this season, check out skillcap.com using the links below. Anyway, guys, that wraps up today's video. We want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.